Hey everyone, I'm here with Travis Wyman, who recently had a great weekend at Road Atlanta. He's a regular contributor to On The Level magazine, and uh, we caught up with him earlier. But let's talk about your weekend, Travis. How, I mean, how does it feel to walk away from such a great weekend at Road Atlanta, where you had not only two first place finishes in the Superbike Cup, but you uh, finished third in Stock 1000 Race 1, and then you won Stock 1000 Race 2. What's that feeling like, man? Uh, it's pretty surreal. I've been uh, pretty busy since the race, working and uh, you know getting things in order with the race team that it hasn't really like set in yet. Um, it's pretty amazing to come away with you know a few victories, the points lead in both classes, and then also a new lap record. I mean, I had pretty high expectations for us going into the year because we got a ton of testing time, but um, I, I, it's hard to explain. I mean, I know now I have the target on my back because I'm, you know, up front in both classes, but I know I need to stay focused and work even harder because I know the rest of the guys are going to be uh, pushing for that top spot. Yeah, that that is so awesome, man. Let's talk. Let's talk about the races and talk about how the S one thousand double R performed. So uh, I know in stock uh, one thousand you gridded uh, P two, but it looks like you had a little bit of a soft start um, in both races. Actually, you you ended you started P two and you ended up going through chicanes in P five or something like that. Let's talk about that those starts. So it's quite frustrating. We're testing some new. Uh... A new clutch package in our bike and we kind of missed the setup a little bit with it so my starts uh, it was pretty unpredictable how the clutch was going to react so um, we know what to do to fix it for the next round but and I definitely don't want to make excuses but I definitely got some horrible starts in the races and it made my job a lot harder for sure um, but I knew we had a strong package so I knew I could fight uh, for the win but it took a little bit more effort in that first race to, to even get on the podium. So, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you, you had to really work your way uh, up into. Uh, you ended up uh, going through. You guys all went through lap traffic. Um, you had said last. You had said last last time we talked that the S one thousand double R that you you favored the flat tracks like India, Indy, and Road Atlanta is not a flat track. Right. So did you guys make some set changes to make the bike work better and uh, rises and, and declines and stuff like that? Absolutely. Um, going into last year, it was a learning year for us with the new bike. So we were kind of shooting in the dark with our setups to begin the weekend. So going into Atlanta, we had a pretty good baseline to start at from what we learned last year. So right out of the gate in first practice, we were you know, first place by over a second on the whole field. So I felt really good about um, our setup. And really, I attribute it all to the testing that we did leading up to Atlanta. The weekend before Atlanta, the team and I, we raced at Button Willow. The weekend before that, we raced at Chuck Wallace. So we were fully prepared and ready to, you know, to fight right out of the gate. That is awesome. And then you, uh, you finished uh, third in that race, and you weren't that far from the front at the end, right? No, I, I said on the podium, I wish we had another five laps because I think I would have had a shot because uh, we were able to manage the tire pretty well. But I had to work pretty hard for, for that podium spot because it was such a tight battle between me and a few other riders. So um, in Sunday's race, I knew that if I was more aggressive in the beginning, I could have a shot at the win, but I didn't think it would be such a commanding victory as it was, you know. So yeah. it was extremely re rewarding. Yeah, you had, you had, so again, race two on Sunday, you had another soft start that put you in fifth, but you had the mindset that you had to get up there faster than you did in race one. Yeah, absolutely. By lap three, I was in second place. So okay. I was pretty aggressive to make those passes um, because I, I could see the leader was already starting to break away. So I knew I had to get into second uh, as quickly as I could. And once I got third place and there was still a handful of laps left, I knew um, I could slowly chip away at, at Jeff May, the leader, but it, it definitely wasn't easy. I was running uh, like lap record pace in order to do that. Um, but once I closed the gap on him and made a pass, I made sure that I 
got by him in, in you know time to start catching some lap traffic so that I could be the decision maker in that. But um, no, it's just uh, it's really a true testament to the team and the effort we put in leading up to the race. That's awesome, man. So where where do you think the uh, the double R has an advantage over the competitors? Is it the straight line speed? Are you is it all areas? Where is it strong? Where is it weak? Um, you know, when you win a race, the bike's strong everywhere. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was difficult to really kind of gauge myself off the other riders, but the new Honda is really fast in a straight line. Um, I just think we really nailed the setup for road Atlanta because I've never felt more confident to push the bike and put in solid laps. And it honestly felt kind of easy to do the pace that we were running. And it was almost a second under uh, the previous lap record. So I'm uh, looking yeah. forward to the next round for sure. Yeah. So Nick, when, you, when you're, when you're trailing, you're, you're seeing where you're losing time and you're thinking, well, what am I missing in that corner? What am I missing on the straight? But if you're, if you're leading, it's harder to, mm -hmm. harder to see those things, I guess. Right. Yeah. But you know, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, VIR is next. So are there any things that you're going to want to adjust with the bike, uh, the launch? for one that's our main focus right now is making sure that we have the right clutch setup for a good start because um if i can qualify up front and i can get a start i feel confident that i can put in the laps um because you know i got like the first race jitters out of the way like i remember what it felt like to lead a race to take the checkered flag which is a very overwhelming uh emotional you know, fight that you have to go through. So now that I got that weekend behind us, I feel like if we get the starts nailed down at VIR, we should have a real good shot at, you know, hopefully a couple of victories because it's a double stock weekend again. Uh -huh. Yeah. What was that? What was that last lap like in race two? Just holding it together, just like just making sure you, you don't make any mistakes. I'm pretty sure my heart rate was pegged. <laughs> Uh, more so than the laps that it took me to catch the leader. Uh, there's a lot of emotions there. You got to try and stay focused, hit your marks, get through it. Thankfully, I knew I had a couple second gap so I could give myself a little bit of a, you know, a buffer. I didn't have to push like someone was right on my tail, but the emotions, dude, it's like when you cross the, the finish line first place, it's just like, you just start crying, you know, it's like wow. all the effort and all the work you put in. Uh, to and to be successful at this level is just uh, amazing, and I'm like getting emotional again thinking about it. But <laughs> hopefully, we can have uh, another good outing at VIR. I, that kind of answers my question because I was gonna, I gotta say, I gotta admit, I'm terrible at wheelies, and I noticed that you didn't wheelie uh, across the line, but you probably had so much going on emotionally that you weren't even gonna do that. Yeah, and uh. We've got some pretty sophisticated wheelie control on the bike, so I can only get a foot or so off the ground. So I'd rather not do it than have some baby wheelie across the line. I I think I about fist pumped out of my leathers. So that made up for it. That was that was so awesome to see, man. Very very awesome. And and you had a you had a busy weekend, right? You had four races, and like how do you get how do you get through that? It must be so hard. Two races a day, right? Yeah, it was, and it was. You know, it's always challenging the, the first few rounds doing double duty with both classes because even though I put in the time, I put in the effort to train and get in shape, there's nothing that compares to, you know, 19 laps at Road America or Road Atlanta yeah. after doing 13 in the stock race. So physically, I felt great, but there's definitely room for improvement. And I think that'll only come with, you know, some more seat time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the first race, first race weekend of the season, you'll, you'll find a rhythm, but again, you, I mean, it's not just physically taxing, but it's also mentally uh, taxing to like have that, that level of concentration um, for four rate for four races in a weekend. That's, that's amazing. Absolutely. But when the bike is on and you can focus on, you know, the riding and it becomes easy to hit your marks and, and go fast. It's easier to focus on your breathing and staying relaxed. But like what's difficult is when the bike's not working so well and you're struggling with the setup and you're missing your marks. That's when it takes your attention off of your breathing and relaxation and mental focus. 
just to get around the track. So when everything's working right, it's definitely a lot easier to, to stay focused. Awesome. Now let's, uh, let's talk about the uh, super bike races. Want to give us the, the lowdown on what happened in race one and race two there. So um, I felt great after the stock race on Saturday and I was looking forward to the super bike race. We had a, a few of the super bike riders drop out due to mechanicals and whatnot, but um, I had really good pace rate from the beginning and I was able to maintain that throughout the race. And I didn't really spend a lot of time looking at my pit board. So I wasn't sure exactly what position we were in, but, you know, to come across the line seventh place in Superbike overall is an amazing accomplishment on a stock bike. Like anytime I'm anywhere near the top 10, it's just like overwhelming, overwhelming to think that I'm competing at the highest level yeah. in the United States and succeeding at it, you know, with the equipment that we have. So I felt great. Um, and then really Sunday, my focus was just on the stock race. Like I put every ounce of effort I had into that stock race. Uh, so by the time we rolled in the super bike race two on Sunday, I think I made it about three laps before I was like totally burned out. <laughs> I had 16 left. So we'll work on that for the next round. But you still, you still finished eighth, right? You still, uh, eighth place. Yep. Yeah. You still finished eighth. Like, I mean, yeah, there's such a huge difference, right? Between the super bikes and what you're running. You just look at the size of the trailers and you see, you see the difference. Um, yep. Did you spend any time? Um, I know uh, in super bikes, Hector Barbara is running a, a double R as well. And I mean, he's, he's been on the world stage for years. Did you spend any time behind him? Yeah. So I finally got a good start. <laughs> it took me uh, quite a few attempts, but in Sunday's uh, Superbike race, I got a better start. And also it helped because they restructured the way that they're gridding the bikes for Superbike race two. The top nine get based off of the finish from race one. So since I finished so high in, in race one and seventh, I was able to start in seventh place for race two, right, bet right behind Hector. So for the first couple of laps, uh, I was able to follow him a little bit, but just in you know, straight motor, he pulled a, a big gap on me on the back straight, but he actually helped tow me to a, uh, a new personal lap record. And I don't know if that'll stand because it was in the Superbike race, but the, the record that I set in the stock race was a 26.9, a 126.9. And I did a 126.5 following Hector. Wow. So I learned a little bit. Very, very cool. You did learn a little bit following, following him. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he's got he's got a ton of experience for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool to be on track with guys like Hector and, you know, Lars Baz and even the guys that I look up to in our own championship. So, yeah, guys like Jeff May, who have who have been everywhere. Right. To, to be Absolutely. Against them. The guys I have a that... ton of respect for Jeff. We we actually were pitted right next to each other and we kind of. We're working together throughout the weekend, you know, and, and talking to each other about how the race was going to go. And uh, he's a good dude, for sure. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Well, um, again, uh, congratulations. All of us at the uh, BMW, BMW Riders Association are so glad to see success uh, for you. You've worked so hard for it. You, we, we read it every, every, uh, every issue, how hard you're working for this. So this is all, all well-deserved, uh, for sure. Well, thank you. It, again, it's a it's a team effort. I invested a lot of money and a lot of time this offseason to make sure we were prepared for the start of the year, something we didn't have the luxury of being able to do last season. So with everything we learned last year, a ton of preparation, me being in you know pretty good physical shape, no broken bones this year, uh, I think we've got a really good shot at the title. And I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I'm just going to stay focused and keep working hard and see where that takes us. So awesome. thank you. Awesome, man. Um, now let's, let's uh, give you some time to do a shout out to the team and your sponsors. Yeah. So uh, I've had some, you know, some sponsors that have come back on board this season. I've had some new sponsors have jumped on this year. Uh, first of all, I have to th thank BMW. I have to thank my crew guys, um, Steve Weir from BMW North America, Alex Torres from Fastline Motorcycle Performance. Those are the two guys that solely work on my equipment. Um, my mom and her Harley Davidson dealership out of upstate New York, um, the California Superbike School jumped on to title sponsor me for uh, Road Atlanta, and I was super happy for that relationship to continue. Irv Seaver BMW came on board, 
uh, during the off season to help me out quite a bit. Uh, Apex Assassins is a track day company based out of Las Vegas. They're stepping up to help me this year. Uh, the umbrella of Helmet House, which supplies me with my suits, your Cortec, showy helmets, Alpine Star boots. Uh, they've stepped up this, this year as well. Alpha One Vinyl Works, Excelsior Solutions, um, and there's a whole list of, of people. And I've actually got some really cool things in the works for VIR about a potential new sponsor, which stay tuned for that. And actually some really exciting news coming in the next month or so about my plans at Road America. So awesome. We all we all look forward to that. So this is awesome, man. So 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 happy for you. Thanks. Uh, a few other sponsors I have to thank. Uh, Hustle Hard Racing came on board. Full Spectrum Batteries, Evolve Technologies, SBS Brakes, Olin's GB Racing, Precision Hydration, keeping me ready for the track, and uh, Motul as well. So if I forgot anybody, I apologize. I'll make sure to get you guys in the next column. You'll get that. You'll get that list. But um, I mean, it's hey, hey, sponsors, it's already paying off. Look at this. Look at this guy. 